I'm so used to saying welcome to Milan Recording Studios, it's kind of a trip to not say welcome to Milan Recording Studios. But today I'm here in Auburn, California, not at Milan Recording Studios, and I am going to be doing a really cool video. So. I'm at a really cool music shop here in Auburn, California called Encore Music, and I've been coming here for many, many years. The folks who work the desk are really cool, and the people who teach here are also super awesome as well. One person in particular, Larry Schiavone, who teaches drums, has been teaching here for 27 or so years, and I actually took drum lessons from him for about a year or so several years ago, and he is a fantastic teacher. I, su I really hope that he's still working here and still teaching drums, because he is the best drum teacher that I have had so far, and he is super supportive and a really great teacher, so I have really great memories of Encore Music. And they also have some really cool musical instruments here. They've got really high-end Taylor guitars, they've got a really cool vintage section for vintage blackface Fender amps and things like that, and they've got everything pretty much under the sun in the world of guitars, and they've also got some oddball stuff like a uh, dulcimer made in Romania. But what I'm going to be reviewing today is the much requested Yamaha DGX 670. Um, this actually arrived to the shop literally yesterday as they're filming this video. I walked in the store yesterday and uh, the guy was actually unpackaging it and taking it out of the box. Uh, when I arrived, the power cable was still in its packaging. So this is literally a brand new instrument, just like it would have been if I had bought it at Milan Recording Studios and have it shipped. So it's a brand new Yamaha DGX 670. It's their new release and their new instrument in the 670 lineup, the DGX lineup. And much like Encore Music, I also have pretty long heritage with the DGX lineup itself. I think when I was about eight or nine years old for my birthday I received a Yamaha DGX digital piano. That would have been about 2008-2009 I mentioned this before in another video, and I think some of my commenters said that I probably would have had the DGX 640 then, maybe the 650. I don't remember the model name, but it was a DGX piano. And recently I reviewed the DGX 660, which hadn't changed a lot since the one I had in 2008. All of the sounds in the 660 were the same. I remembered playing with many of them as a kid. The speakers were the same. The general cabinet design was the same. The build construction was the same. And while the DGX 660 was all black and looked a little cooler, the button layout and even the old LCD screen was still exactly the same as the instrument I had back in 2008 or 9. And so while the DGX 660 was an okay home piano, and it certainly wasn't terrible, I felt that there was some room for improvement with the screen and with some of the sounds and some of the other features. And that's where the DGX 670 comes in, because after all of these years, Yamaha has finally completely revamped the Yamaha DGX line. If you're familiar with the old DGX 660 or any of the instruments previous, you'll remember what they looked like. And as you can see, the DGX 670 looks completely different. We now have a full color, relatively high resolution display screen that looks really, really wonderful. You've got all these detailed menus that are pretty easy to use with these buttons here in front to access them. You've got the good old scroll wheel here that we've always had on the DGX uh, instruments. That's remained the same. It's a great way to scroll through um, and change the sounds and adjust parameters. Just like the old DGX 660 and previous instruments, you've got a whole bunch of arranger functionalities with songs and styles and recording abilities that I won't really be diving too much into. I'd probably have to read the owner's manual because this instrument, much like the previous DGX 660, has so many things that it can do. Is It's the type of instrument that you'd need to sit down and read the manual through to really know it inside and out. And once you know it inside and out, I think it's a pretty intuitive instrument to use. I haven't looked at the owner's manual and I know how to work all the sounds and things like that, but working through the styles and the song, things like that, would probably require me to use the owner's manual and just kind of get a general feeling of how things go to know all of the different features that it can do to talk to you. This is just kind of a quick breakdown video of the things that I'm impressed with with the DGX 670. Now there are still a few things that haven't changed between the 670 and the 660, so let's talk about those really quick. And honestly, there's not a lot. I do not believe the speakers are different on the 670. They do sound pretty nice though, um, so they may have been up with more watts or something. Um, they sound pretty nice, they look about the same, so I'm not sure that they are or are not different. One thing I do know that is not different is the action. This still uses the good old Yamaha GHS action, which is a well-known and pretty well-respected action 
in the digital piano world. Over the years, they will the lubricants will kind of start to go out and they will require some maintenance, but when they're fresh out of the box, they feel great. They really feel good. The music desk here is actually, I think, different from what would have come with the 660. Uh, this is the same music desk you'd find with the P125, and it looks pretty nice. Um, another thing that this instrument has different between it and the 660 is that the 670, the music stand that it's sitting on is now optional. The old 660 came with it in the box, the home style stand, and now the 670 has that as an option. So you could see this as a bad thing of Yamaha making the instrument more expensive without making it more expensive, but you could also see this as a good thing because if you already have a music stand at home for a different keyboard, this instrument can just sit right on top of it and you don't need to spend the time building the additional stand. If you want the instrument to blend in a little bit better with your household, you can totally buy the optional stand. No clue how, it co no clue how much it costs, but it's probably not super expensive and you can use that. But you can also use the 670 as a normal slab stage piano and put it on whatever stand you want, which is pretty cool. The only downside to the DGX 670 that I'm really seeing here is that still, like the old 660, it doesn't have proper direct line outputs. It does have one singular headphone jack in the back that can also double as your line output. There's even a setting in the newly revamped menu that allows you to make the speakers stay on when you have something plugged in, which is a great feature, and that's what I'm using in today's video. Um, but what's also cool about this versus the 660 is there's been some little quality of life changes. One thing that annoyed me with the 660 is every time I would adjust the speakers to turn on, to stay on when I had something plugged in, every time I rebooted the instrument, it would forget that setting. This remembers it. I came in here yesterday, played it a bit, t changed that setting, came in today, and it still remembered that setting. So that's awesome. But what isn't quite awesome is that the, we don't have a proper stereo direct line output, a pair of direct line output cables that you can route to two separate speakers if you were to perform um, on location with this instrument. The headphone jack is okay, and that's what we're recording it with, and I think the reason Yamaha's gone with a single headphone jack rather than a professional pair of stereo line outputs is because the 670 especially is so good and pretty affordable that it would really start to kind of chew into Yamaha's sales of their higher end instruments like the Genos. I'm pretty sure some of these sounds and some of these buttons even and the of abilities of this instrument are pretty similar to the very expensive, much respected Yamaha Genos that I reviewed at the 2020 NAMM show with Peter Bartmans. And that's a very high end instrument. And some of the sounds in this instrument are definitely high end. Let's start off here with the default acoustic piano sound. Something else this has in similarity with the 660 is that you have lots of duplicate sounds. If you hit the piano electric piano button, I love the new uh, sound selecting menu. It's really great. If you scroll through the sounds here, you'll have your default sound being the CFX Grand. And when you scroll to the next page, you have another CFX Grand and a few other duplicate sounds as well. The Pop Grand, the Studio Grand, and I think the Octave Piano 1 and 2 as well are found on this second page. There's a little very tiny text above each sound. On the main default page, it says VRM, and on the second page, it says natural. So I'm assuming that these are two different sound qualities of sample. Why they chose to have one that is most likely a little bit inferior to the other is beyond me, but hey, they're there, and there's a lot of sounds in the 670. So let's check out the default CFX Grand and play a little bit of music on it and check out how it sounds.
So as you can hear, the default sound of the DGX 670, almost called it the 660 there, sounds very nice. The default CFX Grand is very, very nice. What's kind of funny though is although the default piano sound is really cool, it actually pales in comparison to some of the other tones that are found in here, which are such a monumental leap in quality over what you found in the old 660 that it's just mind blowing to me. The organ sounds are amazing, um, especially the organ sounds. Those are some of my favorites. Some of the brass and woodwind sounds are eerily realistic to me um, and some of the other synth sounds are really cool and the electric pianos are really cool too so you've got a whole bunch of acoustic piano variants in here let me quickly play a couple of chords on the default vrm cfx grand and then the natural cfx grand and see if we can hear a difference in the recording this is the vrm cfx grand Yeah, the natural one sounds a little bit more cold. The VRM, I think, is a little bit more warm and has a bit more detail and excellent sound to it. You also have a few different harpsichord sounds as well in the instrument. I wanted to skip past the electric pianos for now and talk about these because these are really cool. One small improvement I think that would make the G DGX 670 amazing is seamless sound switching. They have this really cool thing where you can actually select a sound before playing it. So right now I've got the stage EP sound selected, but when I play, it's gonna be the harpsichord sound. All I have to do is hit the enter button, and now it's the stage piano sound which is actually really cool. So mid-performance, if you've got one hand free, you can scroll down to another sound and just have it ready. And then hit the enter button, which is very easy to do and it's very responsive, and boom, you've got a new sound. If you had seamless sound switching, that would make this instrument even more of a incredible performance instrument. But what I'm gonna do here is play a little excerpt of Scarlatti's K380 with a couple of different harpsichord sounds. You'll hear the jump, I'll try to eliminate it, but you'll hear the jump um, between tones, but both of these harpsichord sounds are amazing. So you can hear that this piano has some really, really cool sounds and changing them mid-performance is actually very easy. By pausing for a moment and then hitting the enter button, I was able to pretty seamlessly switch between the sounds. But if this instrument had a true seamless sound switching, it would be an absolute beast. Let's check out the suitcase electric piano here. And I've got to kind of hurry up the video here. We've got some employees, or not employees, but customers coming in the shop. I don't really want to be disrupting anything. So we're going to take a quick look at some of these other amazing sounds in the DJX. 670, one of them being some of the electric piano sounds. There's a massive variety of them. Again, there's lots of duplicates and different versions of them. Um, let's try the Smooth Tine, which has a really nice auto pan, and we'll play some stuff on this one.
Now, while that may not be the most realistic road sound, it's not really going to be as good as a Krumar 7 or anything like that. It still is really good, and it's a dream to play on. It's really, really lovely. I enjoy playing it. Although it's not the most realistic road sounds I've ever heard, it still sounds very good, and it's a lot of fun to play. There's a few other variants of it. There's the electric piano. has some delay and kind of a more barky tone to it and you've got just so many different types of pianos in here you've also got some DX type tones got some clavinet sounds which is pretty fun, and you've got just so many different electric pianos. Um, there are 50 different piano sounds in the piano category. There are 60 different organ and accordion sounds. There are 60 guitar and bass sounds, which sound really good, by the way. have that level of realism to them. Well, most of them do, and they're pretty awesome. Um, in the strings and choir section, you've got 40 different sounds. The brass and woodwind section has 80 different sounds. The percussion and drum section has 40 different sounds. And the synth pad section has, again, 80 different sounds. So that's a massive variety of sounds, and almost all of them sound amazing. Check out some of the organs. I believe this first one is also found in the P515, and some of the other ones, I think, are unique to the 670. I've never heard them in another Yamaha product. I'm sure they're in like the Genos or something else, maybe the uh, YC, but the uh, I haven't heard them in the DGX line before and they sound great. This next one is called Wider Bars, so gritty and distorted and sounds awesome. Now one strange quirk about the 670 that I found to be rather odd is the order of sounds that are put in the menu. While it's in some senses it makes sense, in other ways it makes little sense. In the organ category, on the, you have two columns of sounds that you can scroll through and select from. On the left hand side we have all rotary organs, and on the right hand side on the top we've got a harmonica and then some accordions. On the next page it's the same thing. On the left hand side we've got drawbar organs, on the right hand side we've got accordions. On the next page, um, we've got, on the left column, we've got two pipe organs and then theater organ sounds. On the right column, we've got two pipe organ sounds and then theater organ sounds. Now, why aren't all the pipe organ sounds together in one big chunk, all the theater organ sounds in one big chunk, all the drawbar organs in one big chunk, and then all of the accordions and harmonica sounds all in one big chunk? The order of sounds is a little bit unusual. Um, in this instrument, on the next page, after the pipe organ sounds, we've got more accordions, and then we've got some tremolo uh, tone wheel organs coming in. This next page, the entire left side is tone wheel organs, and the right hand side is theater organs. Let's try one of the theater organ sounds. Here's one called ballroom organ, and I'll turn the volume down for this, because it, it's pretty loud. <laughs> So you've got wacky 1930s-esque theater organ sounds, and you've got really cool pipe organ sounds in here too. Let me go back and find one of those. Let's do Chapel Organ 1. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, if you go into the strings and choir section, we've got a whole bunch of strings and choir type sounds. Here's contrabass. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, I think the string section is the weakest section of the instrument, but that's honestly not really saying that much because the other sections are incredibly strong. Like, that's super awesome. And there's a whole bunch of really, really lovely sounds. There's the piccolo here. Let's see, what should we play on the piccolo? You've got so many amazing, amazing sounds in the DJX 670 that the sounds alone make me love the instrument. And I haven't even dived into any of the arranger stuff that this instrument is capable of doing. The DJX 670 is an absolutely feature-packed instrument that has an insane amount of information. And I'm not actually going to dive into any of the other types of things that it can do because simply there isn't enough time in this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully just hearing these incredible sounds that they've packed into the new DGX 670 have inspired you to go out and check one out for yourself. If you're in the California foothills, the gold country here, Grass Valley, Auburn, definitely stop by and check out Encore Music. If you're interested in getting one of these, they've definitely got at least one here in stock, probably more. So if you're in this area, you can come by, check them out. Tell them I said hi and um, just check out the store. It's an awesome store. They've got really cool things like this. They've got fancy Taylor guitars over there on the wall. They've got the vintage amps and things like that. They've got drums. Pretty much everything you need for musical instruments they have here. It's really, really awesome. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this instrument, this instrument review and this kind of a store review as well. I love this place. Definitely come by and check out the store if you're in the area. And also, if you're new to the channel, you can check out my channel too. I've got lots of cool videos of acoustic piano digital panels like this and all kinds of other things in between. I've even done a video of a handmade dulcimer. Um, so if you like dulcimers, you can go find that video and check it out. But I've got all kinds of really cool videos on my channel. If you want to subscribe, thank you very much. If you want to help support the channel additionally, you can also join my Patreon page if you're so interested. And if any of that sounds cool, thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.